It may seem hard to believe, but we are in crunch time and playoff positioning is on the line tonight here at Bella Vista High School in Fair Oaks. The 9 and 14 Broncos play host to the 11 and 12 Antelope Titans in a battle of teams tied for fourth place in the Capital Valley Conference with identical three and four league records. The big difference is Antelope's 79-53 win at home over BV on January 5th, which right now gives Antelope the fourth spot, which is important because while the top three finishers in the CVC should make the playoffs, it's possible a fourth team can also go. But even if only three teams go in the postseason, BV and Antelope are just one game behind Roseville in the standings, and Roseville gets to play Indercombe tonight. So things could look much different later on this evening in just a couple of hours for the winner of this game. Good evening, everybody. George Tharlson with you from Bella Vista High School for tonight's crucial Capital Valley Conference matchup between Bella Vista and the uh, Titans of Antelope. Before we start getting into what's going on with this matchup, we have to address a, a major injury for Bella Vista, and that is that Jonah Wooden, the sophomore guard, who has just recently entered the starting lineup, suffered a broken fibula in the game against Roseville the other night, and he is lost for the season. Maxwell Prucher returns to the starting lineup and actually has been in the starting lineup, but he will uh, pretty much take on the role now that uh, uh, Jonah Wooden had been filling in the, uh, in the games for Bella Vista. Wooden really has come on. He's had a couple of games where he was in double-digit scoring. He's a strong rebounder. He'll force steals, do a lot of stuff, and he really played his way into the starting lineup earlier this year. It is definitely unfortunate. If there is a silver lining to any of this, He's a sophomore, so full recovery, back next year, two more years on the basketball team for Jonah Wooden. We certainly wish him the very best in his recovery. The Broncos are coming off a tough 51-43 loss on Wednesday night at Roseville, a game that saw them trailing by eight at halftime and then go on a 12-4 run through the first half of the third quarter. But by the time the quarter had ended, now that 12-4 run brought them back to a tie. By the time the quarter had ended, they were back down by seven, and then were outscored by just one single point the rest of the way, losing to Roseville by eight points on Wednesday night. The Broncos have lost three of their last five since the win over Roseville here to begin the league season on January 3rd. For Antelope, they've lost three in a row and four of their last five. The most recent, a 62-59 overtime defeat at home versus Wood Creek on Wednesday. Their three-game skid also includes losses to Indercombe, who doesn't lose to Indercombe, and uh, a home loss to Roseville by just three points. Antelope, as we mentioned at the outset, did defeat Bella Vista at home uh, on January 5th, 79-53. The Titans are led by sophomore Sir Mr. Harriel, number 21. He leads the team in scoring nearly 15 points per game, just over six rebounds per game, which also leads the team and he also gives them about two assists, one steal, and one block for game. So look for number 21 for uh, the Antelope Titans tonight. He will be doing a lot for them this evening. As a freshman varsity player last year, he put up 12.3 points per game, which was third on the team in scoring, but in terms of total points, he was second with 356. And I know it's Friday night, but this is where the math comes in. The average... Uh, uh, the averages and total points positioning uh, him uh, and uh, and his teammate Julian Ailey, uh, uh, Elias, uh, number three, uh, on different tiers. Uh, Elias was it was the leader in points per game, but uh, or or just ahead of uh, Sir Mister Harriel. But Harriel actually scored more points, played in one more game, and so the average is a little bit lower. And that's uh, that's how he is second in the team. In, uh, in, in points per game, second or third. Suffice it to say, Harriel and Elias are two key components to this team, although Elias's per game point average is down this year to 8.3. Another name to look for for the Titans is Quentin Mitchell, a junior, number 12, the second leading scorer at 10.3 points per game, also the second leading rebounder at six points per game. 
For Bella Vista, of course, as you know by now, Damian Rickett is the guy that leads the way, and everybody knows that, including the teams that they're facing. So the whole deal is they're going to uh, they're going to try and shut Rickett down. At nearly 19 points per game and almost nine rebounds a game, Rickett is the leading scorer and rebounder in the CVC. He scored 20 points and hauled down six rebounds in the loss to Antelope earlier this month. One of the things Coach Gonzalez has talked about is uh, that uh, he wants to get at least three players in double-figure scoring. Bella Vista has had some success in doing that lately, including the game last week against the Intercom Buzzsaw that we all saw uh, in our last live stream. Uh, they still were able to get three players in double figures in that game. All right. Let us now join the opening festivities, and we are going to have the introduction of the starting lineups. We are tonight going to have our fellow Vista Band sing the national anthem, so if you could please line up and sing. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to tonight start with our Antelope Titan starters. We have number three, Julian Elias. Number five, Logan Middleton. Number 10, AJ Cook. Number 12, Quentin Mitchell. Number 13, Dante Martin. And now for your fellow Mr. Parker, we have number 10, Damian Wicket. Number three, Mikey Simonian. Number four, Mark Attractive. Number 11, Zach. O'Neal! And number two, Maxwell Boucher! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a great game tonight. And the head coach of the Bella Vista Broncos in his 24th year is David Gonzalez. The head coach for the Antelope Titans is Mike Dresser, Dressler. We are ready to get this ball game underway, and there's just something about playing games on Friday night, don't you think? We've got starting lineups, we've got the band here, something we have not seen this year yet with the, uh, uh, with the boys' varsity. Uh, we, we did actually have this arrangement for the girls, uh, and we are going to have a girls' game on Monday night that we'll be talking about a little bit later on in the broadcast. Zachary O'Neill will step in to jump center, and he will go up against Quentin Mitchell, the leading scorer for the Antelope Titans. Sir Mr. Harriel is not in the starting lineup. Damian Rickett controls for Bella Vista, and he will find a Trotzik, and a Trotzik will run the point for the Broncos. Rickett will drive, find the opening, powers to the rack, it's off the underside of the rim, goes out of bounds, Bella Vista will retain possession. A Trotzik to inbound the ball. 
Here's Damian Rickett. Now Mikey Simonian still kind of hobbled by that ankle injury from earlier in the month, actually late in December. Petrosic with the ball fake, tried to get it to his left, taken away. Nice defense on the part of Atrocic. The fadeaway doesn't go for Antelope, and Rickett controls. Atrocic gets fouled from behind, and it looks like Dante Martin is going to be called for that foul. That'll be his first. And the first team foul on Antelope. Crutcher to inbound. Atrocic is picked up by Martin. Simonian's open for a three. That one's short. Elias with the rebound. And he gets it back. A.J. Cook with his runner draws the foul. Can't get the shot to go. And A.J. Cook earns himself a trip to the free throw line. This will be on O'Neal. First personal on O'Neal. First team foul on Bella Vista. A.J. Cook is a 6'3 junior and a 71% free throw shooter for the Titans. And Cook dents the scoreboard for the first time and you have that classic basketball 1-0 lead for the Antelope Titans. Rick at high post. He's picked up by Martin. He'll launch a shot over. That wasn't Martin, that was Mitchell. And a put back, it, it actually dropped in for Damian Rickett. Gets the friendly roll. Back the other way, Rickett gets himself a rebound. A Trotsik is picked up by Logan Melton. Melton, the senior. Pick up Petrocic once again. Petrocic has him, looks like he's got him beat by about at least three inches. O'Neal underneath. Loose ball and Mitchell controls. There's Melton. Looks like a travel there. A.J. Cook called for the walk. And Bella Vista gets control of the ball once again. Broncos with the two-point lead early on. Simonian will bring it up, guarded by Elias. Rickett on Mitchell, he'll launch another three and drill another one. Damian Rickett with the hot hand early for Bella Vista. Cook on Prucher, spin move, Prucher blocks it. Cook tries to save it, he's out of bounds. Energetic start for Bella Vista, team that really could not hit anything with the exception of the early part of the third quarter on Wednesday night at Roseville. O'Neal, Rickett, touch pass. Crutcher drives in. Check that, Simonian. Back outside, three-point shot on the way for Martin. And Elias flies in for the rebound attempt. He can't get that to go. Right now, Antelope only the one free throw so far. Broncos by five. Rickett drives in for a deuce. Rickett all eight points for Bella Vista early on tonight. Broncos open with a seven point lead. Just under five minutes to go in the opening quarter. Cook finds the opening, Elias. Hippity hops the dribble, in on a Trotzik. He'll kick it over to Cook, three-pointer. Antelope just really cannot buy a basket right now. We'll use that cliche and the fact that there may be a lid on the basket. We'll use both of them right now. A Trotzik back to Rickett. Rickett on Mitchell, Kruchers open. Step back, three-pointer on the way. Oh, that's off. Melton gets the rebound. Elias passes up the three. Here's Logan with a teardrop runner 
and he gets the first field goal of the game for Antelope. Bella Vista's lead is five. Rickett off the screen from O'Neill. Now it's Simonian. Simonian, nice jab step. Gets by two defenders. Can't get the roll. Fight for it. They're going to call. They're going to call the jump. And the possession arrow is going to favor Bella Vista. And we're going to get a wholesale substitution here. Five for five subs for Antelope. They have balanced scoring on this team. A couple of players in double figures and another handful that are right around seven to eight. This is Malachi Brown. And now uh, Jamora Shaffer, who drives to the basket, gets the roll and draws the foul. That's going to be on a Trotzik. That's his first. Jamora Shaffer, 3.8 points per game. Hasn't spent a lot of time at the free throw line. Was four for five on the year until that shot. And now the lead is two. Rickett loses the ball. Here's Shakur. Lost it, he gets it back. Shakur with the green shoes. Ethan Thompson. Malachi Brown. Rotated to Shakur again. His driving runner will dance around and drop in. So Jamoris Shakur comes in and he gets them a quick five points. 8 8 tie. Artem Rudko is the one that's uh, guarding a Trotsik right now as he's new into the game. Rudko is in there. Ethan Thompson is number two. Dalen Mike is in the game, number 34. You see him out at the top of the key. Shakur, we mentioned. Here's Rickett. And Simonian's shot from the corner will go up and over, and so Bella Vista turns it over. So this uh, second group for Antelope has brought a lot of energy for the Titans. Get a pushing foul, no shot. Dalen Mike drove to the basket. Thompson to inbound. They try to get the ball into Rutko. Deflected away. Entry pass. They try to knock it off of a Bella Vista player and wind up turning it over. So the Broncos will get the ball back. Broncos jumped out to an 8-1 lead. And then uh, Antelope brought in this current group. Five brand new players off the bench and they have brought this back to a tie. Bella Vista hasn't scored since going up 8-1. Simonian finds an opening to the baseline. He'll drive to the rack, gets the deuce, gets the foul. First points of the game for Mikey Simonian. And the foul will be called against Artem Rudko. The junior averaging two and a half points per game. Bryce Levins will come in for Bella Vista. Zachary O'Neill will have a seat on the bench. He, he was uh, battling some injuries in recent weeks. But now back into the starting lineup. Simonian looking for the three-point opportunity. And the Broncos up by that aforementioned three points. Here's Shakur. Shakur on Simonian tries to go through the double team. Looks like Damian Rickett got all ball there, but they're going to call a foul. They're going to call that on Simonian. So they're going to say, what I saw was Rickett blocking the ball, and it looks like it was all ball, but they said Simonian uh, got him on the arm. Simonian right now. Like he was, uh, sure if he was bleeding, but uh, apparently they're 
satisfied with what he was able to do. Shakur makes one of two free throws. He's got six. Broncos by two. Rickett underneath, steps around and gets the deuce. Damian Rickett up to 10 points. And a block by Simonian. Rickett, he's open for a three. Rebound, Prucher. That one's a little too hard on the putback. Antelope controls. Here's Shakur. Shakur very quick. Dalen Mike drives in, draws the foul. First points of the game for Dalen Mike. Looking to cut the lead to one. Kruger controls. One minute to go in the opening quarter. Aggressive defense by Antelope. Simonian's open for a second, decides not to take it. Here's Rickett. Antelope's really quick with this aggressive defense. 3-2 zone right now. Atrocic, eight seconds on the shot clock. Three-pointer, got it, Mikey Simonian. Simonian's got six. Five-point lead for Bella Vista. 25 seconds to go in the opening quarter. And that's Artem Rutko underneath. Found the opening, waited for Rickett to fly by him. A little bit of contact, no call, gets the deuce. Four seconds to go. Simonian to the free throw line. Great defense by Antelope to prevent a shot. And we have come to the end of the first quarter here at Bella Vista High School. The Broncos, a spirited opening quarter. 16 points on the board. They take a 16-13 lead here into the, uh, the, the second quarter. Taking a look at some of our first quarter numbers, Jamora Shakur off the bench, leading the way with six points for Antelope. Logan Melton has two, as does Artem Rukko, Dalen Mike, and then one point for A.J. Cook was the first point of the game. And then uh, for Bella Vista, Damian Rickett, 10 points in that quarter to lead the way. Simonian has six, including a three-pointer that he just uh, nailed, and between the two of them, that accounts for all of the Bella Vista scoring here in the first quarter of action. So happy to have you along here for tonight's uh, league matchup on a Friday night. This is the first time since the day after Thanksgiving that we've had a home game here at Bella Vista uh, on a Friday night. And as you can hear, the band is here. Uh, cheerleaders, of course, are here for every game. And uh, we even did the whole starting lineup thing, which we haven't even done uh, this season. Uh, but uh, just lots of excitement here and lots of energy and a larger crowd than what we've been seeing as well. Set to get underway here in the second quarter. Bella Vista with possession. Here's a Trotzik. Right now it's the reserve group still in the game for Antelope. Simonian drives in. Had a little trouble possessing the ball. And it looks like we're going to get a foul called on Jamoris Shakur. That is his first. Rickett, he's going to bring it all the way out near the midcourt circle and reset the offense. No, he's going to launch an NBA three. I can do that, says Damian Rickett. Six-point lead for Bella Vista. Wide Arpen, Artem Rudko. And he answers that very quickly. He's got four points on the night, already well above, almost doubling his per-game average on the season. And now he picks up a Trotzik at midcourt. Trotzik tries to get it to Lovins. 
and there's some good defense by Dalen Mike to step in front of Lovins, not allow him to get to the ball and forcing the turnover. More substitutions for Antelope. A lot of their starters back in. This is Melton, works off the screen, dumps it underneath. That's Quentin Mitchell who draws the foul. That's going to be on Simonian. That's his second. First team foul in the second quarter on Bella Vista. Quentin Mitchell to the line, 51% free throw shooter. And he misses the free throw. Riley Dick is going to come into the game, and he is going to replace Maxwell Prucher. Simonian still addressing something with his finger. And Mitchell makes one of two. Right on cue with his average at the free throw line. Three point lead for Bella Vista. Broncos haven't trailed in this game except one nothing. Here's Rickett, his runner will not go, follows the shot, gets the rebound. Loose ball, Bella Vista will control. We have not seen the leading scorer for uh, Antelope tonight, Sir Mr. Harriel. Here's a Trotsick outside. Rickett will drive in and get the runner. Damian Rickett, 15 points. High post, it goes Mitchell. Mitchell with the Euro step, and the runner doesn't go. Follows the shot, gets the rebound and the friendly roll. Mitchell has three. Three-point lead for the Broncos. Pressure defense from Antelope. There's a shot from the outside by Prucher. Does not go. Melton off the back of a teammate. A little backhanded shot won't go. Bella Vista rebounds and a timeout called. <laughs> Had a run going, but uh, Coach Gonzalez needs to get his team together to regroup with 5.55 to go in the opening quarter, or the opening half, I should say, 21 to 18. We want to let you know that on Monday night, we will be back here for the, uh, uh, for the senior night festivities for the Bella Vista girls team as they will be taking on the uh, River City Falcons. This is senior night here, and... Uh, uh, it's going to be kind of a Western theme, if you will, as uh, they send off uh, four of their players. Uh, and in that group that you see on your screen right now, that's uh, Sam Graham. Uh, and then there is Chloe Yanez, Autumn Shannon, and Gretel Hess are the four seniors that will be honored on Monday night. The festivities will begin very close to 7.30, maybe a little bit earlier than that. It'll be right after the JV game ends. And we'll have our live stream starting in time to bring you those senior night festivities and the play-by-play -play action of the Bella Vista girls taking on the Falcons of River City, of River Valley, I should say, River Valley of Yuba City. Just trying to run all that stuff together. And I know there's also a River City High School, and I keep confusing the two. River Valley Falcons from Yuba City taking on the Bella Vista girls this Monday night. We hope you're out here to honor the four seniors, and also, but if you can't make it, join us for the live stream here, live stream here on YouTube. We're not gonna have any live streaming, unless it gets really exciting. And so far, actually, it has been. Here's a three-point shot for Bella Vista, and the rebound is controlled by Mitchell. Long pass. Nice job by Marcus Merch to get his hands on the loose ball and get it over to Damian Rickett. Marcus Merch flying through the air to get that loose ball. Here's Riley Dick to the free throw line, closed off. Merch sends it into the corner. Three point shot on the way from Atrotsik is not going. Melton the rebound for Antelope. In the corner, three-point shot on the way, swish. That's Quentin Mitchell. 21-21 tie. 
Rickett back the other way. Scoop to the hoop. And the deuce for Damian Rickett. And now the Titans want a timeout here. Take a look at their roster here, their group of players. And I'm looking for a number 21, and I don't see it. Number 21 is Sir Mr. Harriel. He is their leading scorer, averaging 14 and a half points per game. He's a sophomore. sophomore and it appears that he is not available for them tonight and I apologize did not have a chance to connect with the coaches for Antelope before the game it's one of the things that I try to do to find out about things like this but uh, we will continue onward here got a whistle and a stoppage, and it looks like, is it, um, is it Simonian has had an issue with his finger all game, and apparently he is now going to have to come out of the game and be tended to. We've seen him uh, take a, a, a jersey and, and kind of wrap it around his finger. Clearly it's, it's, it's bleeding, and uh, they're not gonna let him play, so he's gonna run to the locker room and get this figured out. Melton. There's a runner for A.J. Cook, and he puts that one in. Three points on the night for A.J. Cook. It's a 23-23 tie. Oh, and there's a steal. That's Mitchell. Tries to go in for the dunk. The dunk doesn't go, but he does draw the foul on a Trotzik. Second on Mark. Mitchell a little frustrated with himself not making that free throw. Looking to get Antelope their first lead since one to nothing. Misses both of them. We mentioned the last time Mitchell went to the free throw line, he is a 51% free throw shooter. He's got the pink and white shoes. Nice shoe game by uh, Antelope. That's a crazy cross-court pass. And Trotsik is double-teamed. Tries to get it into Lovins underneath. Ball is loose, knocked out of bounds. And they are going to say that Elias was the last to touch. And so Bella Vista will maintain possession. 17 seconds on the shot clock. Rickett. Mitchell has been shadowing Rickett the whole game. Rickett immediately double team finds a Trotzik. Six seconds to go on the shot clock. They're counting it down. A Trotzik drives in, gets it to Merch, and that is shot clock violation. They tried to count it. The players tried to count it down for uh, for the Broncos, but uh, didn't uh, didn't work out. So the the shot clock violation and. Uh, Broncos give up possession, had a chance to uh, break the tie. Now Antelope has the opportunity. This is Elias. Three-point shot on the way. That one's no good. And Bella Vista controls. Patrotsik. Underneath it goes Maxwell Prucher on the baseline, gets his first two points of the game. Remember what we said, Bella Vista wants to get at least three players in double figures. This is Cook driving in and he answers. A.J. Cook with his second field goal, he has five points total. And we are knotted at 25. That's a little too high and a two couldn't control Maxwell Prucher, so it's off his hands and out of bounds. That's 
Cook works off the screen from Mitchell. Then on the pick and roll, tried to find Mitchell, and he knocks it out of bounds. So Bella Vista will take possession of the ball. Marcus Murch was down there again, doing stuff away from the ball. And he had a little hand in uh, forcing that turnover as well. Rickett immediately double teamed. Loose ball on the floor, Simonian. Antelope is collapsing on the ball, on the person with the ball, but left, that left Rickett open and he drills another three point shot. Damian Rickett has 20 points. Back the other way, Ethan Thompson takes it to the rack and he draws a foul and will head to the free throw line. That's gonna be on Prucher. First on my, uh, Maxwell Prucher, third team foul on Bella Vista. Ethan Thompson also sporting the pink shoes, the same style as Quentin Mitchell. Thompson, by the way, is an 80% free throw shooter this year. Averages almost four and a half points per game. And that is his first point of the game. This is the second group that is back in. It looks like Antelope plays a, a five for five, or at least that's what they're doing tonight. Thompson makes them both. And look within one after Rickett banked in that three-point shot just a few moments ago. Simonian baseballs the pass. There's Rickett, Simonian's open. He'll launch a three. Long rebound is going to come right to Rickett. He'll take a three. Left of the key. Tries to bank it again. Doesn't go. And they're going to call that a they're going to call it a jump. He couldn't tell who uh, knocked it out of bounds. And so the possession arrow on that call will favor Antelope. Not too many fans, I think, on either side appreciated that call. Here's Cook, drives in on Rickett, draws the foul on Rickett. A.J. Cook will go to the line. He's a 71% free throw shooter. Cook now to six points in a tie ball game. And if he makes this one, Antelope will have taken the lead again. That one point lead is Antelope's biggest lead of the night. They had it one other time at one nothing. Mikey Simonian fouled at the center court circle, trying to get the ball passed off. And this is gonna be on AJ Cook. That is the first on Cook. The 6'3 junior who averages eight and a half points per game. Teddy J. Duenas coming in, and he will uh, replace A.J. Cook. Atrocic. Now Simonian back to Atrocic. Antelope just very aggressive on that defense, and a near steal there. Here's Rickett. Rickett underneath. Prucher drives in. Dances off no good. Rickett the rebound. Puts it back up and in. Damian Rickett with 22 points tonight. Brown. Loose ball on the ground. Merch has it. And he gets it to Rickett. Under a minute to go. In fact, we're at 40 seconds to go. In the first half. In the corner, it's Prucher. Prucher has bumped. Lost the ball. Clearly lost the ball because he was bumped. No call. And on the other end of the court, Malachi Brown puts it in and draws the foul. So apparently that's contact at, uh, at this end of the court, but the contact is not a foul at the other end of the court. I'm just trying to make sure I get that straight. With that basket, Malachi Brown puts Antelope in front by one. 
and Rickett controls the rebound. Brown, by the way, an 83% free throw shooter. Krucher. Bring it to the other side of Trotzik, will launch a three and get it. First points of the game for Marka Trotzik, and it comes in the form of a three-point shot. And a steal by Mikey Simonian. Simonian drives in, gets the layup. Simonian has eight, and we have come to the end of the first half. Wow, what a finish there. An Atrocic three-point shot, a steal by Simonian at midcourt, and then he drives it all the way back in and gets the final points of the first half of action here at Bella Vista High School. So we are at halftime. It is a four-point lead for Bella Vista, 35-31. We'll let you take, uh, take in some of the halftime festivities that are going on on the court right now. And we'll take a bit of a break and be back and recap the scoring for you in just a few moments. So we will take our break right now. 35-31 in favor of Bella Vista.
we hope you've enjoyed some of the uh, halftime festivities here, uh, a lot courtesy of the Bella Vista Band and uh, some very young ones that are out running around on the floor as well as uh, you might have seen right before uh, right before this guy came on camera here. Let's take a look at some of our uh, first half numbers in a very entertaining first half. Uh, again, uh, these two teams are both fighting for playoff uh, positioning as the, uh, uh, the Broncos and the Titans both find themselves in a tie for fourth place in the Capital Valley Conference heading into tonight's action. Antelope at the current time has that one win over Bella Vista uh, in league play that gives them the tiebreaker at the present time. But obviously if Bella Vista can hold on and take advantage of the fact that apparently Sir Mr. Harriel, the leading scorer for um, uh, Antelope is not available this evening. Uh, Bella Vista can take advantage of that, pull out a win, then all of a sudden the season series is even and uh, then it's other tiebreakers that we would have to look at if the two teams finish tied in league play. So the, uh, the Titans, they are led by a trio of players with six points each, A.J. Cook, Quentin Mitchell, and Jamoris Shakur, all with six points. Then it's four for Artem Rutko, and two each for Dalen Mike, Malachi Brown, Logan Melton, and Ethan Thompson. For Bella Vista, Damian Rickett leads the way with 22 points, eight for Mikey Simonian, three points for Marka Trotzik, and two for Maxwell Prucher. So that rounds out the scoring here as we are about two minutes away from getting the third quarter underway here at Bella Vista High School. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got uh, on the schedule. We talked about the, uh, the girls game. Let's talk about the girls game uh, coming up on Monday again because that's going to be senior night for the Bella Vista uh, Broncos. The, uh, the girls team will be taking on River Valley of Yuba City on Monday night. And uh, four seniors will be honored, including Sam Graham, who is uh, uh, the one to the left on the picture that uh, is showing up on your screen right now. She's missed uh, pretty much the season due to an injury, but she will be honored as one of the four seniors along with uh, Chloe Yanez, uh, the right next to her, she's second from the left, then it's Autumn Shannon, and furthest to the right is Gretel Hess that uh, rounds out the, uh, the four seniors that will be honored on senior night uh, here for the Bella Vista Broncos um, uh, on Monday night. So we will be on the air for the live stream for, uh, for that on Monday night. So we are looking forward to uh, bringing that to you when, uh, when Monday rolls around as we are finishing one week here at, um, uh, with, with the boys on a Friday night. They need to do more Friday night home games, by the way. This is so cool tonight. Lots of energy here um, for, uh, for this game. And it's the only uh, Friday night game that they've had here at Bella Vista High School. Um, this season other than the, the home opener that was played on the day after Thanksgiving. As we get ready for the second half to get underway, the, um, uh, the Broncos after this game against Antelope, they're next in action on Tuesday at River Valley up in Yuba City, and then we are back next Thursday at 7.30 for the boys game against Wood Creek. So we have two games for you next week, the girls game on Monday and the boys game on uh, Thursday of next week. So you hope you join us for lots of activity. And then we are back for the season finale for the boys against Yuba City on the 7th. And that will be senior night for the boys team. We're back underway now, third quarter. Broncos lead by four. Broncos lead by six. Mikey Simonian gets things started here in the second half. Nice defense from Simonian on the other end. Antelope will retain possession. Here's Mitchell. Mitchell finds an opening, tries the Euro step again, open three pointer for Cook. Cook now has nine. Dare we say he's cooking? Here's a Trotzik who's fouled at midcourt. And Bella 
Vista to inbound the ball at midcourt. Get a moment here, we're going to check the Antelope schedule as we would like to welcome those that uh, are supporters of the Antelope Titans that may be watching us tonight here on YouTube. Glad to have you along. Ricketts, turnaround jumper, gets it off the glass again. Damian Rickett, 24 points on the night. Here's Cook. Nice rebound by Mitchell. Can't get it to go. Mitchell fights for the rebound, has it swatted away, and a foul is going to be called. Looks like it's going to be on Simonian. No, it's on it's on uh, O'Neal. O'Neal's second personal. Dante Martin will inbound the ball. Mitchell. Here's Cook for three. Mitchell's right there to get his hands on the rebound, and finally Melton controls it. And flying in once again, Elias comes up with it. He's open for a three. Finally a rebound for Bella Vista. Must have been four offensive rebounds on that end for Antelope, and they couldn't convert. BV needs to take advantage of that, uh, that fortuitiveness, if you will. Here's Rickett driving in, and he'll draw the foul and head to the free throw line with Bella Vista leading by five. The foul is on Julian Elias. That's his first, second team foul. Rickett to the line. Rickett right around 80% from the charity stripe. Interesting how all the Broncos lined up behind him for the first free throw. And now they take the, the lane. Marcus merges into the game for Zachary O'Neal. And Rickett will get his second of two free throws. And he gets his second of two free throws. 26 points on the night for Damian Rickett. And a turnover on the other end is going another break for Bella Vista and a chance for them to build on this seven point lead. Clean screen, by the way. Rickett did nothing wrong. Unfortunately, Prucher, maybe he was a little uh, surprised that the ball came his way and couldn't control it. Antelope fans don't like it, but Rickett just stood his ground and the player ran into him. In and underneath, muscling up a shot is Quentin Mitchell. Very impressive, impressed with Quentin Mitchell tonight. Dante Martin winds up on the ground and is a little confused that he called that he was called for a foul there. But you know what? He doesn't put up much of a protest. You can tell he's frustrated coming off the bench to the bench. Bella Vista to uh, inbound. Galen Mike is into the game, tries to fight for it. He deflects it, and that will remain Bella Vista ball. One thing about this Antelope team, they are aggressive everywhere. We watch them in their zone defense and in their... Um, even in the man-to-man, -man, they just get right up in your face. Antelope fans still screaming uh, for a foul on the uh, screen by Damian Rickett. Again, nothing wrong with what Damian Rickett did. We've got an injured player, might be Elias, that is on the ground. And the Antelope fans are not, in fact, you can probably hear some of them screaming right now about the two screens that Damian Rickett has set but Rickett, he stood his ground and didn't move on either one of them. Just because the player falls to the ground does not mean that it is a foul. Julian Eli Elias is up and coming off the bench, or coming to the bench, I should say, and he'll have a rest.
One of the referees is having a conversation with the head coach at Antelope, who is very, very animated. Antelope in possession. This is Cook. Cook will work off the screen. Cook to the free throw line. Mitchell the rebound. He'll power it up over Merch. That one comes off. Merch tries to get a hand on it. Loose ball on the ground. A fight for it. A Trotsic controls for Bella Vista. BV crowd getting into it right now too. Another screen set by Rickett and Simonian's able to get the ball into front court and draw a foul. Fourth team foul now. It's going to be free throws the rest of the way here in the third quarter on common fouls by Antelope. Merch. Again, that goes right off the hands of Maxwell Prucher. A couple of possessions there where Prucher wasn't able to uh, find the handle on the ball. Five-point lead for Bella Vista. Cook off the screen for Mitchell. He's open for a three. Collision on the baseline. And that is a, uh, a foul on Mark Atrotsik. And they are calling this the flagrant. So that's going to be two shots and the ball for Antelope. <laughs> Dalen Mike makes both free throws. That brings the lead down to four and it's possession to Antelope. And they will inbound on the baseline, right between the V and the I of Bellavis, actually standing on the I. Dalen Mike on Rickett, step around move, Rickett winds up on the ground, and Rickett's gonna wind up with a foul. So that's going to be the second on Damian Rickett. Dalen Mike is going to go to the free throw line. The aggressive nature that we talked about for Antelope, it looks like they're going to start powering to the basket. And trying to get free throws or just muscling up shots. Dalen Mike, by the way, that's only his third free throw attempt of the year and his first miss. And he makes the second. Actually, I stand corrected. He just had two other attempts moments ago. It was still his first miss. Damian Rickett the other way scores for Bella Vista. So he's actually four for four when he missed. Now he's five for six. Cook gets the rebound after the missed shot. Dalen Mike back to Cook. Cook trying to find the opening into the lane, puts it up and in. 11 points for A.J. Cook. Two point lead for Bella Vista. Broncos have led most of the night. Antelope has not led by more than one. Rickett for three, that one misses badly. Malachi Brown. Now Mitchell. Mike underneath. On Rickett. Backs in on Rickett. Here's Mitchell. Tries to drive all the way in. And he gets the roll. Tie ball game at 43. Bella Vista. Turned the ball over a few times in recent possessions. Although the last possession, Rickett was able to get find the bottom of the net. Driving in, drawing a foul. Mikey Simonian will go to the free throw line. 
Logan Mitchell called for the foul. That's the fifth team foul on Antelope. Now, of course, doesn't matter here because he was in the act of shooting. 2.57 to go. Common fouls will be two free throws for Bella Vista for the rest of this quarter. Simone in a 67% free throw shooter this year. Looking to put Bella Vista in the lead here. He gets the one of two. Simonian with 11 points. So Bella Vista with two players in double figures. No one else is close yet. You need to get uh, some ba more balanced scoring. Brown. Here's Shakur, drives into the baseline. The runner comes off. Rick at the rebound. Matrosik. Picked up by Brown. Trotzig has the size advantage. Here's Prucher. Prucher will spot up for three. Inside position by Mitchell, but a nice save by Simonian. Three-point shot from a Trotzig. Simonian the rebound. He'll bring it out and reset the offense for Bella Vista. Nice runner by Simonian to draw the foul. Malachi Brown doesn't understand uh, why he was called for the foul. Lots of aggressiveness on the part of uh, Antelope, as we mentioned. Simonian was off balance, and the officials do say there was contact. There have been some questionable calls tonight, but by and large, it does not appear that the officiating is, uh, uh, is one-sided in any way. Simonian misses both free throws. Nice passing. Malachi Brown looks like an offensive foul taken by Marka Trotzik. That was on A.J. Cook. That's his second, so he will head to the bench. Substitutions for Antelope. Substitution for Bella Vista. Ben Campbell is into the game. Rickett, all the way to the baseline, Damian Rickett. He's approaching 30. If he's not there already, he is there. 30 points for Damian Rickett. Thompson. Shakur, Shakur will drive all the way in. Rejected! Mikey Simonian. Trotzik in a collision with Malachi Brown, who's going to be called for another foul. He's pleading his case. Two on Brown. It's two free throws for Bella Vista. Brown frustrated as he walks to the bench. He's not coming out. He's just there to talk to the coach. Trotzik, Petrotsik 59% from the line. Broncos lead by three. And he gets one of two. Petrotsik with four points. Zachary O'Neill back into the game. It's a big lineup for Bella Vista right now. O'Neill, Merch, and Damian Rickett all in the game at the same time. Shakur on O'Neill. Here's Thompson. Thompson thought he might have been fouled, lost the ball. Brown has it. Under a minute to go in the third. Here's Mike. Mike, a fadeaway. 
O'Neal controls. 40 seconds to go. O'Neal has trouble with it. Shakur comes up with the loose ball and gets the roll. Eight points for Jamoris Shakur. 20 points for Bella Vista, or I'm sorry, there's Rickett. Another collision, no call. Two points for Shakur, he's got eight is what I meant to say. Seven seconds to go, Rickett drives into the baseline. He draws the foul on Dalen Mike. That's the first on Mike, at least according to my numbers. Unofficially. Rickett to the line with 3.9 seconds to go. Two point lead for Bella Vista. Rickett, we mentioned, is an 80% free throw shooter. Looking for his 32nd point of the game. And Rickett gets them both. Four point lead, Marcus Merch at midcourt deflects the ball away. There's a clock issue that they are resolving right now. Three point seven is what they have. It was three point nine, but the only time the ball was touched was right as it went out of bounds. Here's Melton, puts up a shot at the buzzer, and it does not go. Rickett controls, and Bella Vista will take a four-point lead into the fourth quarter here at on their home floor. Entertaining, spirited game here at Bella Vista High School. The Broncos have led throughout the game mostly. They've held a lead as high as seven points in the contest, and... Uh, uh, Antelope, they've had a few leads themselves, but they've all been by one point. So a, 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 a really good job by Bella Vista tonight, staying with them and uh, also hitting some key shots and um, uh, keeping that lead going. Uh, we've had some uh, we've had some moments tonight where fans on either side have been screaming about calls that are made and uh, that they don't like. Damian Rickett with some screens that where players fell to the ground, one of whom was injured and had to be had to be taken off the, the court. Well, he got up and walked off the court on his own play, on his own control, but he had to leave the game at least for a little bit. I think yeah, I think Shakur has subsequently come back uh, in the game, but uh, uh, just very very entertaining game. Lots of energy from the fans of both sides tonight. And so they think that there's a call that goes against them. And, and by the way, here's Shakur into the game. So it's, it's good to see that he's back and moving around uh, again. Here's Melton. He finds an opening, drives to the basket, can't get the roll. O'Neal controls. Here come the Broncos back the other way. Simonian, he'll do the Euro step. The shot's a little flat. And Damian Rickett almost took that one away as A.J. Cook first had the rebound. And then Rickett knocked it out of bounds. Seven and a half to go, four point lead for Bella Vista. Here's Melton. He'll spot up at the free throw line. And Mikey Simonian trying for the rebound winds up on the floor. Be Bella Vista ball, first team foul on Antelope. Here's Rickett, he'll go all the way to the baseline. His runner won't go, but he draws the foul. And they're saying that the foul was not on the shot, so Bella Vista to inbound. Rickett, he'll launch a three. It's a little long. 
Shakur. Shakur. Kick it back out to the outside. Cook will launch a three. That one's short. Merch the rebound. And his pass is deflected away. Goes out of bounds. And Antelope is last to touch. So Bella Vista will get possession. Here's a Trotzik inside. That's off the hands of Cook. He'll get it back. Shakur will kick it over to the left side. There's a three-point shot. It's on the way and good. That's Milton that makes that one. He's got five. One-point lead. Inside it goes, Marcus Merch with two. That's his first points of the game. Three point lead. Quickly back the other way and running towards the basket, drawing the foul is Shakur. He winds up on the floor. O'Neal gets called for the foul. That's three on Zachary O'Neal. Shakur cuts the lead to one. Approaching six minutes to go in the third, or the fourth. Rickett will back it out. He's being hounded. Drives in, there's a block and a save. Nice play by Artem Rudko. Long pass into front court, loose ball. Controlled by Antelope. Here's Cook, Cook looking to drive. Atrocic reaches in, Campbell winds up with it. <laughs> and it looks like Cook gets called for the foul here. That's three on Cook, third team foul. Trotzik, Shakur with the guarding assignment. Rickett. Rickett on Rudko. Rickett drives the baseline, draws the foul. And he's on his way to the free throw line. That's the fourth team foul now, so it's going to be uh, free throws the rest of the way for Bella Vista on common fouls by Antelope. Rickett with 32 points tonight, looking to get Bella Vista up by two. We got a whistle and a timeout call. 5.20 to go in the fourth quarter here. We've got plenty of time left in this one. It's just a two-point lead for the Bella Vista Broncos. Damian Rickett, another Damian Rickett-type night, or as we like to say, Damian Rickett doing Damian Rickett things tonight with uh, 33 points for the Broncos. Mikey Simonian with 11, so that's two players in double figures, and pretty much since we have uh, uh, been talking to Coach Gonzalez about the uh, uh, about him wanting to get at least three players in double figures, we've been kind of on the watch for that. Um, uh, Mikey Simonian is uh, at, at 11, as we talked about, and then um, uh, the next leading scorer for Bella Vista is Mark Atrotzik. Um 
Want to quickly remind you again, on Monday night, we will have the girls game for you, uh, their senior night against River Valley. Uh, Ellie Tomei of the girls team is 12 three-pointers away from 100. She holds the record of three-pointers for Bella Vista in a game, a girls game. Ellie Tomei does 12. She set that against Vacaville back in December. If she hits that record on Monday night, she will hit um, 100 three-pointers for the season. She's already set the season-long three-pointer mark for the Bella Vista girls team. But we're on the 100 watch. We'll see what she can do. Here's Melton. Melton on Campbell. And he gets it over to Mitchell. The runner does not go. A couple of shots there for Quentin Mitchell that he can't get to go. And Bella Vista controls the rebound. Five minutes to go. And the Broncos by two. Merch. Simonian. Looking underneath for Rickett. Instead, they bring it back around the perimeter. Atrocic. Rickett's now out front. Takes the handoff. Said that many times before. He falls to the ground with possession, and that's a travel. Rickett now grabbing his ankle. Actually, it looks like he's going to tie his shoe. Maybe he just tweaked it a little bit, and tying his shoe gives him an opportunity to he kind of hippity hops his way into backcourt, but it looks like he's limping a little bit. So we'll see what happens. That'd be a huge loss for Bella Vista. Shakur. Martin. Martin with a spin move. And the ball swatted away. And I think is Ben going to get a, a foul that time? No, yes, it's Ben Campbell. Reached in. That's his first personal tonight. Two-point lead for Bella Vista. Non-shooting foul. First team foul on the Broncos. Martin. Spin move. 360. Martin. Ironically, that is his first two points of the game. Called his name a lot in the first half, but no points until now. Tie ball game, four minutes to go. Simone into the baseline that loses the ball, deflected out of bounds, Bella Vista to control with 23 seconds to go. If that, it's like there's some moisture on the ball, or I'm just going to go ahead and clean it off here. Matrotsik will inbound the ball. Five count is on. Simonian way out front. You now here's Rickett. Rickett closed off. Merch. Simonian on the right side. Inside Rickett. He'll use the back backboard. Does not go. Martin controls. Dante Martin. And we got a whistle. Timeout called. So it'll be a full timeout called by the Antelope Titans who have possession and a chance to take a lead here. They have not led much during this game. But we have a 52-52 tie, 5.38 to go in the fourth quarter of play. It has been a very entertaining game throughout. 19 and 10 overall, 7 and 5 in the Capital Valley Conference and they lost to Ponderosa 73 to 69 in the opening round of the Division II SAC Joaquin section playoffs last year. Uh, the, uh, the Titans uh, beat the Bella Vista Broncos earlier this season. That was early in the, uh, uh, it was the, the second league game of the year on January 5th. It was 79 to 53 at Antelope, this one a lot closer. Uh, the leading scorer for the Titans, uh, Sir Mr. Harriel, is uh, not available tonight. And so Antelope has been uh, battling this one 
without him. There's a three-point shot from Logan Melton. And Melton is now up to eight points. That's a three-point lead for Antelope, which I believe is their biggest lead of the game. Petrozic. Here's Merch. Merch out front. Campbell finds a Trotzik, works off a screen. Simonian, he'll drive to the baseline, double team, loses the ball. And they're gonna say that Julian Elias hit him on the arm. And that is the fifth team foul. So that means free throws the rest of the way. Simonian hits the first. Mike Dresser, the head coach of the Antelope Titans, is not happy with the officiating right now. And he's having a conversation with one of the, uh, with one of the refs. Simonian with his second free throw. And he gets that one as well. So two free throws for Simonian. And he's up to 13 points in the game. One point lead for Antelope. Shakur, Elias. Inside now it goes to Martin. Double teamed, open for another three. That's Melton who just made one moments ago. Broncos with the rebound and they can actually take the lead back. Campbell. Simonian, he's looking underneath for Rick. It gets it to him. Double teamed. Back outside. The ball deflected. Cook has it. Cook driving in on Campbell. Campbell knocks it away, but uh, knocks him away. But underneath, I, I think they're going to say the basket does not count. <laughs> Campbell was called for the foul before the rebound. So that's going to be two free throws for A.J. Cook, but the putback shot underneath does not count. A.J. Cook, a 71% free throw shooter on the season for Antelope. And he's looking to put Antelope back by three. Broncos had a possession to try and take the lead. Now Simonian tries for the tie, does not go. Cook the rebound. Martin's open for a three. Rickett controls the rebound. Merch. Ball deflected, taken away by Cook. Cook will drive in on Merch and he gets the roll. Five point lead now for Antelope. And the Titans now immediately call for the timeout. Even though they've got a bit of a run going. Interesting that they would call the timeout to stop their own momentum, but that's uh, what they have chosen to do. AJ Cook, by the way, is leading the way, uh, leading the scoring tonight. For, um, for Antelope, he's got 15 points so far for the Titans, 10 points for Quentin Mitchell. Again, Sir Mr. Harriel, the leading scorer for the team, uh, is not, uh, not on the bench, or if he is, he is not in uniform. And uh, not available to play tonight. So 141 to go. Bella Vista after that basket by Antelope will take possession. It's a five point lead for the Titans. Bella Vista has led for well over three quarters of this game. But right now Antelope has the advantage. Simonian. To the baseline, his shot will come off. 
Simonian gets his own rebound. His putback will roll around, come off. Simonian, another rebound, another putback. Winds up on the floor, and Antelope controls the rebound. Martin. Right now, Bella Vista can't seem to buy a basket. Antelope had that problem at the beginning of the game. Cook taking his time, one minute to go, 13 seconds on the shot clock. Baseball's a pass inside to Martin. And Atrocic will be called for the foul from behind as he deflected the ball, but they say he also got body. That's the third on Atrocic. 56 seconds to go. Martin will go to the free throw line. Martin is a 61% free throw shooter. And now a six point lead. This one's starting to slip away for Bella Vista. It was there for the taking. Only one for Dante Martin. Broncos control the rebound. Akrotsik into front court, 50 seconds to go. Rickett for a three, got it! And immediately Bella Vista with the timeout. That cuts the lead down to three. You need a defensive stop right here. There's 44 seconds on the game clock, 35 seconds on the shot clock. Even if Antelope uses all 35 seconds, if they don't score and Bella Vista is able to get possession of the ball, they will have a chance to tie. We'll see where it goes. As this one is coming right down to the wire. 44 seconds to go, three point lead. Damian Rickett has done all he can for Bella Vista tonight. Thirty-six points on the night for Damian Rickett. But only four of those coming here in the fourth quarter. Bella Vista went through a cold stretch. And now the Broncos will put up some uh, full court press right now. Trying to force the turnover. Martin looking for an inbound. And immediately Rickett goes in and fouls Julian Elias. That's three on Rickett. Elias is a 61% free throw shooter. 42 seconds to go. And it's the fifth team foul, so it is free throws. But it's two free throws. No more one and one in high school basketball. A.J. Cook getting ready to come in. Cook is going to replace Quentin Mitchell. The 6'5 junior, Quentin Mitchell, who averages 10 points per game and is at 10 for tonight, will have a seat on the bench. Huge free throw right now for Antelope. Another miss. And a held ball on the rebound is going to favor Bella Vista. Broncos could tie. Looks like a timeout called. Broncos are going to use a timeout. 40 seconds to go in the ball game, 60 to, four, to 57. The Broncos trail by three. They have been leading uh, through most of this game, but over the course of the last five minutes or so, Antelope, whose biggest lead prior to taking this current lead was only one, maybe two points in this game. This, uh, this uh, three-point lead now was as high as six. That's been their biggest lead. The Bella Vista has actually led the game throughout tonight, and they've just hit the, the they just hit a big three-point shot and forced uh, free throws 
by Julian Elias, and he missed both of them. The Broncos got the rebound, were tied up, and we're fortunate that the possession arrow favors them, so they get possession of the ball here coming out of this timeout. 40 seconds to go. The Broncos need a three to tie. But there's also plenty of time on the clock that they, if they get a good two, that will help as well. A Trotzik to Rickett. Rickett's had a huge night tonight. Rickett drives to the baseline. The runner does not go. Rickett the rebound. The putback is good. The lead is won. And another timeout call by Bella Vista. That may be their last. 23 seconds to go. Now, what you can do here for Bella Vista, you can foul again. You can foul, send them to the free throw line. Hope that they miss. Julian Elias just missed two free throws a few moments ago. He's a 61% free throw shooter. Presumably Logan Melton will be on the floor. He's a 73% free throw shooter. A.J. Cook, 71%. Quentin Mitchell is a 51% free throw shooter. That might be one of the reasons why he they took him out of the game. We'll see who they have on. So it's a smaller lineup. Ethan Thompson is on the floor. He's an 80% free throw shooter. Elias is on, well, they've got uh, Malachi Brown, 83% free throw shooter. Broncos, they can't, they can't let time run out. Rickett with a steal. Broncos have a chance. Rickett drives in, Euro step, runner is good. Damian Rickett with the deuce. Nine seconds to go, a collision, offensive foul. Antelope is complaining that they called for a timeout. Okay, so it was not an offensive foul. My, my apologies there. Bella Vista forced the turnover out of bounds. And so the Broncos will have possession of the ball on the other side of the timeout. Antelope coaches were complaining that they called a timeout before that collision on the sideline. But the officials did not give them the timeout. You can call the timeout, the official has to grant it. If they don't see it, they're not gonna call, call the timeout. There's two officials on the floor, either one of them, if they see a timeout being called, they can call for it. But if they don't see it or don't hear it, and it is loud, it is still up to them to call for the timeout. So it was an out of bounds play. Bella Vista forced the play out of bounds and forced the turnover. Marka Trotzik right in front of the scorer's table will inbound the ball. Bella Vista leads by one. Antelope's gonna have to foul, and they do. They foul Simonian. Mikey Simonian will go to the free throw line. He'll have two. Four seconds to go. Two critical free throws. Broncos are out of timeouts. Antelope has two. They could call a timeout here and maybe try to freeze them if they want. You can hear the Antelope crowd first making the noise, trying to distract him, and then the Bella Vista crowd with their approval when he makes it. Huge free throw here. He missed it. And Damian Rickett with the rebound and draws the foul with 2.3 2 seconds to go. Damian Rickett has done everything tonight. He could ice it right here. 80% free throw shooter going to the line this time for the Bella Vista Broncos. The best Antelope can do now is tie. So at this point, 
Coach G is off the bench telling his players, don't foul. Everybody is off the free throw line. Antelope could tie. They call the timeout with 1.6 seconds to go. Damian Rickett makes one of two. It's a three-point game. Not much here for Antelope, and they will be inbounding in backcourt. College and the NBA have the rule to where you can advance the ball into front court, but high school does not have that. So what a game we've had for you tonight. 63-60, the Broncos lead this one by three. It would be a huge win. And again, presuming that uh, Roseville doesn't also pull off a major upset, it would be a much bigger upset than this one, especially since Antelope is playing without their leading scorer, Sir Mr. Ariel, tonight. Uh, but uh, a win tonight for Bella Vista if they do not secure the three-point shot and force overtime. This is a huge win, and it would bring Bella Vista into a tie uh, with Roseville should Roseville lose tonight for third place in the Capital Valley Conference. And our understanding is three teams, the top three teams in the league should make it to the section playoffs. So we'll see if that uh, works out in Bella Vista's favor. Obviously, there's still a lot of basketball left to be played in this season. We got a couple of more weeks to go, but the uh, but this uh, right now, the uh, the business at hand for the Bella Vista Broncos is pulling this one out. So two, two, four attempts at the free throw line within the past couple of seconds. They make two of them and get to a three-point lead. Antelope will be inbounding the ball in backcourt. Broncos have to be certain not to foul. Or they could and send him to the line for two. Rickett backs off of Martin. Martin is going to send a long pass into front court. Knocked away by Simonian. Ball is loose. Time expires. Broncos win. And we've got ourselves a bit of a court storming. Not everybody. And in fact, it looks like some of the fans are just being ushered back towards the stands. What a game we've got, we had tonight. Huge win for Bella Vista, coming on the heels of that disappointing loss at Roseville on Wednesday night. The Broncos bounce back and take on a very talented and very spirited and very quick and aggressive Antelope team. Yes, they were at without Sir Mr. Harriel, but I tell you what, this Antelope team has a lot of great players on this team. He's got a great supporting cast. Uh, on this team. So uh, a great game uh, tonight for Bella Vista. And I see Jonah Wooden out there uh, with, uh, with his, uh, his injury hopping back to the bench with, uh, with assistance from Coach O. He wanted to go out there and shake hands as well. He wants to be part of this, even though he's going to have to miss the rest of the season uh, after the, uh, the injury that he suffered, a broken fibula in the game uh, against the uh, Roseville Tigers. Uh, just want to total up the uh, uh, the final points, um, uh, and we'll do that in just a second. So huge game tonight for the Broncos, and then they uh, are going to be going back on the road next week. Uh, they'll have a road game on Tuesday, and then they're back here on Thursday. Uh, so we'll be talking about uh, some of that when we check the schedule uh, as well. But uh, we talked about this uh, uh, this very talented antelope team. A.J. Cook, in the absence of Sir Mr. Harriel, A.J. Cook really uh, 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 stepped it up uh, tonight for the um, uh, for the, uh, uh, the, the the Titans as we uh, total out the uh, uh, the points here. A.J. Cook led the way with 15 points tonight for the uh, for the Titans. 10 points for Quentin Mitchell and uh, eight points for Logan Melton. Seven points for uh, Jamoris Shakur. And then it drops down to the four points for Artem Rudka. We didn't really see him in the second half, but he played very well in the first half. Two each for Malachi Brown and for Dayton Mike. For the Broncos, it was the Damian Rickett show. And I'm just uh, uh, double checking his points down the stretch. 
two, four, seven, eight, nine. Yes, he finishes with 41 points tonight. So that's the second time that he has exceeded 40 points uh, in a game for Bella Vista. Uh, Mikey Simonian also in double figures, had a critical free throw uh, down the stretch as well. He finishes with 14 points tonight for the, the Broncos. And really only two other players, uh, or three other players, I should say, scored. Preacher had two, uh, Merch had two, and then four points for Mark Atrotzik. So quite a game tonight for the uh, uh, for the Broncos, a 63-60 win. Um, and uh, if I if I have anything to say to the schedule makers, let's have more Friday night home games next year uh, for both the boys and the girls teams. That would be really cool. It, it, it was really neat. Uh, uh, folks don't have to go to school tomorrow, so they're more inclined to maybe come out, spend a late night. Uh, there's no homework due, at least. I guess they're turning homework in online now, so you could have homework due at midnight on Friday if, if, if you want. But still, uh, come on out on a Friday night and have a great time at a high school basketball game, especially uh, against a team w that, uh, that the Broncos lost to earlier in the season by... Um, by quite a few points, the, the 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 score in that one was 79 to 53. So that was a that was a 26 point loss earlier this year, and they bounced back. Now again, of course, Sir Mr. Harriel did not play in the game tonight for Antelope. For the Broncos, their next game will be on Tuesday night, January 30th, at Yuba City against River Valley. Check out NFHS, the 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 national uh, live streaming um, uh, outfit uh, that. Uh, not everybody uses it, but a lot of schools do, and River Valley is one of them. So you can, if you're, if you're not able to head up to Yuba City for the game on Tuesday night, you can check out the uh, River Valley live stream on NFHS at 7:30 and watch Bella Vista take on the River Valley Falcons, and that's a win that they are going to need as they continue to fight for uh, a playoff spot. Then we are back here on Thursday night, the first, as the Broncos will take on Wood Creek. Now that, of course, won't be an easy one. Uh, as well. And then the Broncos will be closing out action on February 5th. They will go to Intercom, and then they will close it out uh, for the regular season on Wednesday, February 7th, where they uh, will welcome Yuba City to town for their final home game, and that will be their senior night. Speaking of senior night, we are going to be celebrating senior night with the girls team on Monday. Uh, and the, uh, the girls will be taking on River Valley right here at Bella Vista. The scheduled start time is 7.30. It might be a little bit later than that. Senior night activities will begin minutes after the conclusion of the JV game. The JV game scheduled to start at 6, should be over just about by, by, by 7.30, if not a little bit earlier. The four seniors who are graduating, uh, you see the picture on the screen for, uh, for the, uh, the Bella Vista uh, girls team that Sam Graham that is uh, furthest to the left she's missed the season uh, due to an injury Chloe Yanez is right next to her Autumn Shannon and then uh, Gretel Hess the four seniors that will be graduating this year for from the Bella Vista basketball team the girls and they will be honored this Monday night at senior night against River Valley and we will be here for the live stream and also for the uh, uh, for the senior night activity. So we'll be getting underway probably around 7.15, 7.20, maybe a little bit uh, later, and then we'll just stay on. We'll bring you senior night, and then we'll just stay on with the live stream to bring you the basketball game against River Valley. But what a great game tonight for the boys team. They're fighting for that uh, third place spot and a, a, a berth in the Sac Joaquin section playoffs and a 63-60 win tonight over Antelope is going to help them. Again, Roseville taking on Intercom tonight. If Roseville loses that, then Bella Vista and Roseville are tied for third place. And the season series between Bella Vista and Roseville is even at a game apiece in league play. So that tiebreaker cancels itself out and we'll have to think of other tiebreakers if they both wind up with the same score. Thank you for joining us again uh, for all the action tonight. We want to say, uh, well, I'll give a special hello out to Scarlett Thompson, our statistician. She could not be here uh, this evening, um, but we'll give her a shout out because she's done such a fabulous job for us during basketball season and also in the football season. Our camera operator is Julie Tharlson, and our producer tonight is John Warner. Once again, the final score, Bella Vista 63, Antelope 60. 
Thank you for joining us. We'll talk to you Monday night for the girls' game and next Thursday for the next boys' home game right here on our Bella Vista Hoops page on YouTube. Have a great weekend, everyone. Good night.